All right, I just wanted to make a video today that's kind of about suspension for dry land mushers, an intro video, because um, it's just a very often neglected part of dry land rigs. A lot of people only use them briefly in the fall and in the spring. I'm in weather conditions where I'm dry land all year round and I finally learned how to properly take care of things like my suspension and my brakes and it's made such a huge difference in the performance of what is otherwise, in my case at least, very old, very basic equipment. And all it takes is a little bit of checking into how it works and using some elbow grease and getting it cleaned. So I'm hoping I can share a few tips and links to videos to help others learn how to keep theirs in good working condition. So here we go. Some of the basic parts. This one I have here is on a Diggler DSK, the disc brake model. It's from 2007. So it's quite old at this point. It's a coil fork. That means that there are literally giant heavy metal springs in each leg of the fork and that's what gives the suspension action. It's not as nice and as smooth and adjustable as an air fork, but it really does do a good job if you take care of it. Um, I'm gonna try to cover some of the things that I've learned and that I notice all over now that just, you know, we're all worried about the dogs and the dogs come first, but it's so much more fun if we keep our equipment working. So here's a few things. First off, I see a lot of people routing the brake lines and attaching it right to this part. This is the stanchion. This is supposed to move up and down inside of the lower leg. If you're attaching things to that, it's not going to be able to move properly and you're going to be scratching up the part that needs to say smooth to move through its travel the best and smooth the bumps for you. <laughs> so what I've had to do here, mine doesn't have nice new modern guides for the cable, so I've attached it down here. You can see this keeps it from going up too high. So it's stuck here. Then I've also attached it to the crown of the fork to make sure that it's pulled away and is not rubbing and wearing away the metal because this has actually been refinished and repainted. This does wear away and rub away quite easily. Um, so there's that. That's one big thing. If your fork is z cable is zip tied to your fork right there, you're probably not getting much movement out of the fork and that's something you can easily fix right away. Just move the zip ties, get it in a better location. Um, the next thing would be right here. These rubber seals are to keep dirt and dust and water out of the lower leg of the fork. That's really important too. And if the seals are still good, you can get away with a lot and it'll still keep functioning but it just will keep the action working much more smoothly if after every ride you you take a clean rag and just brush it through there make sure that there's not gunk stuck on there just waiting to get wedged down in there and gunk that up um so next would be just that budget level forks like this which a lot of them are uh, just based on the terrain that dry land mushing is done on. Not, a, not everybody has as rocky a trails as I do, and they're not needing a ton of suspension, but it's on the bike. It's actually a very heavy part of the bike, so you want to make sure it is, in fact, actually moving. So when you're getting on it, I'm really light, so I had always just assumed that the fork wasn't moving much because I was too light to move it. I'm not much over 100 pounds, so I was just thinking that the ride wasn't very smooth because the springs in there, they're just set for average adult to make sure that, you know, 
the average adult is not going to hop on it and be harshly bottoming out the spring and fully compressing it all the time. Well, it still should move much more smoothly than it was. I measured and jumping up and down on it as hard as I could just in my garage. I was only getting about eight millimeters of movement out of it and it's a 50 millimeter travel fork. So what you'll want to do is hop on, have somebody balance you side to side if you need to, and just jump on the thing while you have a piece of zip tie just loosely around there. And if that, if you get off of it again and that zip tie hasn't moved very far, that means you're not getting any use out of the travel on it. And you'll need to take it all apart and clean it and grease it. That's actually something that should be done very regularly and I didn't know that either. I just figured it it was there, it was fairly well sealed up, it shouldn't be dirty, but it is. And also again because it's a budget focused suspension fork that's not for heavy 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 duty off-road use they're assembled pretty quickly and they do that to save money so that the product can be affordable but they are generally not carefully put together at the factory so when these top caps were taken off that's where the springs are located on my specific fork that may not be the case for every one of them. Mine doesn't have any kind of, you know, extra damping or preload or anything. So you can check yours specifically, but inside mine there's just a spring in each side. One spring was completely dry, and it had come that way from the factory, obviously, and the other was just caked in an excessive amount of grease. So too much grease isn't good. Too little grease isn't good. At least once, if you've never opened it up, even if it's a brand new budget fork, coil suspension fork, open, f figure out you know what your manufacturer recommends for cleaning and overhauling it. Open it up and get in there and make sure it is actually greased. And that can make a world of difference. Mine, once I did that, I could jump up and down on it in the garage and I got at least half of the travel available. And I, I can feel it so much better out on the trail now. Um, if I have like a really big hit, it will use much more of the travel and it's so much smoother. Uh, because if you're hauling around this fork, the, well, like I said, this, uh, this Diggler's from 2007, it's heavier than the 27 and a half plus tire air fork on this bike significantly heavier it's like carrying around a boat anchor for no reason if your suspension is not actually moving through the travel so i'm going to put some links down in the comments too and i hope that that can be helpful for some other people to get their fork cleaned up and actually working well